bit late to go to the Palaki Heritage Site. So let it, let it be known. I called the time. Someone had to do some work. Yes, he did. I was filling out postcards. But we have a 10.15 time to be there, so we'll see how it goes. Sexton wants me to break a ball joint out here. Mm, we don't need to break a ball joint, but I did map quest it and it's like something like 37 minutes on dirt roads to get there. And it is 9.45, so we should, we should be there right when they're departing. Good timing. About a mile away, and we're getting really cro close to all the red rocks. See, it's cute visitor center. Yeah, it's cute. I'm just kind of wondering, is one Since we're late, we uh, missed the intro, so we're kind of just guessing. But, oh no, I've been here. Okay, I Kyle's been here before, doesn't remember anything. Okay. If you look above, you can see black streaks. And who knows what that is? Why? It's where water comes down. You can see it coming off here. And it's, the blackness is bacterial deposit. It's called desert varnish. So the bacteria leave this deposit and then if you're going to, going to do petroglyphs you carve through that surface area and then the petroglyphs stand out right the other thing to point out before we go up are these plants right here anyone know what it's called no the the long what you might use for ba basket making bear grass but i believe it's in the lily family not the grass family so you'd make baskets out of it, and you'd also use it as a layer in roof construction. You have beams, poles, a layer, a mat layer of bare grass, and then four to six inches of compacted clay soil. That's your roof. When things dry out and crack or start to leak, you just wet it and put another layer of clay down. The soils around here, are full of sand and clay it makes a perfect mortar and that's what they used the, just a little bit of context humans were living in this valley 14,000 years ago when mastodons were around Colombian mammoths oh, wow. uh, the miniature horses that went, these all went extinct Antique buffalo, twice as big as today's buffalo. These are called megafauna. In the mid 80s, a fellow dug up part of a jaw of a Colombian mammoth where the cement plant is on the way to Jerome in the limestone layers there and two six foot tusks, ivory tusks. <laughs> so and they found, when they were building Interstate 17, they found footprints this big around from mam ma Columbian mammoth tracks in, above Montezuma's castle. So those, that's when the first humans showed up, at the end of the last ice age, right? Okay, all the nice stuff is walked. So the mm -hmm. nice, the nice mono, Complete models of matates are probably in some ranch person's mm -hmm. fireplace, right? But when you mm -hmm. find things like this, pick it up, look at it, and put it back where you found it. Don't make a little display rock. Mm -hmm. you're, <laughs> by moving something, you're destroying the archaeological value of it. It has to be studied in situ. Mm -hmm. So what kind of roofs would they have had? So the... The, if you look through that doorway, you can see where the ceiling beams went into the roof. So there was oh, a wooden this, structure. Okay. If you look, so these were two, three of these were two-story rooms, dwellings, parts. The earliest rooms were one story. There's a doorway in the end, and then the only way into the second room was through a hole in the roof. 
So I described the roof construction. This is sacred architecture to the Hopi. The ladder coming out of the navel oh. is the umbilical cord of humans emerging from Mother Earth into this world. Part of their oral tradition, right? So maybe the Sinawans had some similar viewpoint. Mm. But you're saying the Sinawan, the name Sinawan was just given to them, but they're really they were continuing since that tens of thousands of years ago in, that, in their presence here. And we gave them that name. Well, there were the Paleo Indians, mm -hmm. specifically Clovis culture. They found only evidence of them. They haven't found campsites. The only evidence of Clovis are their, their projectile points, fluted projectile points. And the first one that we know of was found in 1992 at Hanaki, a fragment. It's on display at the ranger station, Red Rock Ranger Station on 179. And there's all kinds of other uh, points there. Open the drawers when you go and check it out. So those are so the ones then, that are the oldest. So we don't know how biologically, how interrelated these cultures were. Uh, archaic people are gone. Uh, some of those became Anasazi or maybe Sanawan. Uh, that's pretty likely because the, in the early days of archaeology, the late 1800s, early 1900s, anytime there was an artifact change, archaeologists would say, oh, somebody new moved in. But the change in pottery styles or projectile points, the change, not pottery because that's new, a new phenomenon, but the change in projectile points over time in the Verde Valley slowly evolved. It wasn't like, bang, there's a mm. different culture here. So Peter Pillas thinks that that the Sanawan culture evolved out of the archaic hunter-gatherer culture that was here. And the Hopi say these were some of our ancestral clans. Mm. And there is archaeological evidence to support that, but not to prove it. And, and if you wanted to dig up these old bones that have all been reburied and gather DNA, DNA yeah. and talk <laughs> yeah. some Hopi into donating <laughs> his DNA, even the hair that, was that ain't going to happen. Like... <laughs> That's not in the near future. So, Is there any other Indian tribe um, wanting to claim the Sanawan? Sanawan? Uh, well, if you find bones... It could be Yavapai or Apache because they, the Yavapai Indians overlapped with the Sanawans and okay. they're still around. Okay. And then Apache came in at least 500 years ago, mm -hmm. maybe sooner, but they came, they speak Athabascan, mm -hmm. like oh. the Navajo oh. and the Inuit. And because they can still communicate with Inuit people, archaeologists, uh, say, linguistic archaeologists say, mm -hmm. it had to be within a thousand years that they came south. Mm -hmm. From the Arctic? Out of Canada. From the Arctic. That was so cool. Yeah, it was very cool up there. Hey, I'll tell you guys some stuff before they come, if you like, that we won't share with the full group because we won't have time. Okay. By the way, I'm jealous of your hair. <laughs> I used to have hair like that. <laughs> 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 it's terrible. It's just... <laughs> Over there. We were all excited about that hole. We found ash in it. We thought, cool, this could be 12,000 years old stuff. We're going to go carbon check it. And we went and carbon checked it, and guess what? 1920. 1920. Some cowboy cooked his pork and beans in, in there. Oh, yeah. nice. And uh, so the ash was all of 1920. It was real historical value. We just laughed. What did he <laughs> say? You know, thankfully, yeah. the cowboy left things in pretty good shape otherwise. Okay, yes. so we're going to start. Now, first of all, this is the grotto. And the grotto, by definition, is a covered place with water. Now, today we have a little bit of water left. Sometimes we don't. And then I've got to pull out this picture. Oh, wow. The smoky hole, the lunch hole, as I call it now, the cowboy lunch place. There is, just to the right, if you look close, you will see a 
a figure that looks like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, just just to the yeah. below it and to the right a little bit. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Do you see that dark figure? Mm -hmm. It looks like this. No. This is what it looks like when we use the pixel program and D stretch. Oh. It's, well, it's actually they think of jackrabbit, but you know it's it's uh, but look from this to this. This is how much vibrancy and color has been lost. Now this is interesting because you have the colors here. Those would have been archaic colors. The archaic people put their deities on the wall with splotches of color. Splotches of color. That's how they symbolize them. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, they put this. Now, we don't know exactly why they would put the, the uh, jackrabbit here. I don't know if there was a rabbit clan. I'm not sure if there was. Uh, but, you know, well, sometimes the animals represent things we don't understand. Imagine if somebody came and found a, an American house from the 21st century and found a donkey and an elephant on the wall. And they say, donkey and elephant. No, Republican and Democrat. You know, but how do they know that? You know, maybe they will because we are leaving a written record they didn't. Mm -hmm. So we're not sure. Now, moving across, do you see the white squiggly line on the wall here? Yeah. You see, what's above it to the right? The moon or the sun, right? The moon or the sun. And we think it's the sun. But take a look at that and now look back here at the skyline. Now look back again. And you see how on the, underneath the white squiggly line there are three kind of black triangles? Mm -hmm. There's one, two, and then three mm -hmm. underneath the white squiggly lines. Why would the sun and those mountains be important to the Sonawa? Seasons. Why, why did they care about seasons so much? They were farmers, right? Okay, now I'm going to go over here, and I have to turn around and show it to you this way, because it fits in better with the, with the mountains. Take a look. Take a look. You can stand right where you guys are, oh, wow. and you look up there and you go, shortest day of the year, winter, December 22nd or so. Longest day of the year, right up there, long, right up there summer day. And here's the important one, equinoxes. Oh, okay. Equinoxes. So the sun's coming north. As soon as it hits here, first corn planting. A third of the way up, second corn planting. Two thirds of the way there, third corn planting. Hits the longest day of the year, first harvest. Starts to move back, second harvest. Moves back again, third harvest. As soon as it hits the equinox again in fall, time to hunt and gather like heck because winter's coming. Farming's over for the year, guys. Let's go get some animals and, and gather everything. So we believe that is a solar economy. Mm -hmm. Hopi girls used to keep their hair until they were married. So this girl is eligible to be married and she's looking for a husband. So what do you think? Do you want to put your hair up like this? No. Are you sure? Oh, come on, it would look so cool. No, no, no. Some people say that uh, George Lucas got his idea. <laughs> I don't necessarily buy that. But this is what, um, so, no. We believe in every animal you could find in the Southwest within a range of here. They, it looks like they're all there. And what's interesting about this is, do you see the human figure kind of on the upper right? And the human figures in this position, yes. what's happening there? Riding without a horse. Hunting? Like that. Looks like he's no. riding a dinosaur. Now think of a woman. Giving birth. birth. Giving birth. Uh -huh. The way natives give birth. Yeah. We believe this is a representation of the mother of all animals, huh. which was a figure in every culture that we know of in their, in their hierarchy somewhere. Okay. Now, you, as Westerners, we can well imagine that they came here and asked permission from the mother to take her children for food, that they came here and fed her for a good hunt. Yeah, this whole wall, lunar calendar, maiden around the edge there, the mother of all animals. This could have been a place you came to request a good husband, healthy childbirth, many children, a good wife. We don't know. Okay, these are just suppositions, but there's a lot here. Oh, wow. He did a really good job. <coughs> this one is apparently the lunar calendar that there's 13 of those.
red circle-ish things. Did you like it? This is my number two time being here. What First you said? time I rode my bike. <laughs> yeah, you did. Didn't have reservation. They're like, well, shit, since you rode all the way down here, well, uh, we'll uh, I'll let you jump in on this group. <laughs> and then I rode all the way back. And it was hotter than heck. Yes. I didn't know. I mean, they didn't. It doesn't explain reservations or nothing anywhere. But anyway, that was good. Yeah. So before you come, be sure to make a reservation. You have to call. There's a phone number, and then uh, head on out. The other Honaki. Uh, the uh, other dwelling out here is called Bear Bear House. Bear House in uh, Hopi. This one, Palaki, is Red House in Hopi. You have to go six miles from this location and then a three mile hike loop to it. We're not going to do it today, but um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah, okay. The rock wall with um, the pictographs was amazing, and V Bar V has a way better rock wall, but this one has is pictographs, which is different. It's painted on, and it's probably a lot. They said like 1100 or yeah 11,000 years or 1100 years of oh. history on the wall whereas other places it's maybe a few hundred so thank you guys so much for watching another video of an adventure in Sedona it was a good a uh, lot of good information I love this kind of stuff so I hope you do too be sure to like subscribe and hit that bell for notifications and be sure to stay curious. I'll see you in the next video.